Welcome to episode 64 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this episode, I sat down with Anna Kid English from ThoughtWorks in India and asked him how he got started in sourcing. Yep. So like most of the people that came on the show, I too never planned to <laughs> get into sourcing. Um, quite a few people who know me personally uh, for a long time know that I, uh, before getting into recruitment, I have actually worked as a lecturer. Uh, and I used to teach <clears throat> mechanical engineering students uh, in a small work. Uh, it was called a learn and earn setup where students used to come to the lectures for a few hours and then they would actually go and work in companies and we would give them the, the diplomas. So I used to teach those people, those, uh, those working people uh, about some mechanical engineering subjects. And uh, so, so it happened once that uh, I, had, I got a chance to work with the placement department of this um, and I was involved in some soft skill trainings and how do you give interviews. Uh, and I had no idea about these things. You know, I only knew about the mechanical engineering part of it. So I did some research. I watched a lot of interviews, you know, those, those YouTube videos that talk about how do you give interviews and all of this <laughs> research. And then I worked with the placement department. I got to speak to those HRs who came to interview in our college and there was a successfully placed batch. So <clears throat> the person that I was working with told me that, you know, I'm really good at this stuff and I should try my hands at recruiting uh, because basically I do not have any future as a lecturer. Uh, it was a small setup and there's not a lot of growth. So this is how I actually got interested in it. And I landed my first job in an agency. It was called uh, HR Remedy. It's still, it's still there. Uh, they're doing good. Uh, I went there and I think that's the first uh, place where I actually started to source profiles, you know, through some job boards, some reference. I used to call people. But uh, yeah, that, that was the starting point. I think this started in, uh, back in 2014-15. I know, I know like having talked to other recruiters and sources in India, I know that obviously India is a completely way of, of doing things um, in just in terms of hiring and the, the, the numbers. Um, I know you've worked a lot internationally as well. What's been your kind of biggest difference from, you know, working locally and obviously coming from a very different background and then like having to recruit internationally and source internationally? Yeah. Uh, so when I was working in India, uh, India, see a lot of, there's a, India is like 1.3 billion plus people in India. So you know how much talent and IT, you know, the resources are just like available easily. You can go to any platform and you can find people. Uh, in India, there are primarily some job boards that have a lot of candidates on there. You know, just to name, I would say Nokri.com uh, is, the, is the largest, at least it was the largest when I was working on it. So uh, finding people was not really a challenge, but uh, if I have to reach out to them, uh, I know for a fact that there are 10 other recruiters or sources who are reaching out to them. So I got to make my pitch unique. I got to make my messages unique and everybody's doing unique right now, you know? So uh, you got to be unique in that. So uh, in, in India, while I was sourcing, you know, I had to really go talk to the candidates about, you know, what projects they are going to be working on, what skills they are going to be working on. And finding talent was not much of a challenge, but, you know, convincing talent was a challenge. Uh, that's, that's one thing that I've seen in, in, in the India market that I haven't seen in the global market. Uh, so there are, there are around 11 countries, 11 regions that we are sourcing for, um, in the global market, uh, it's mostly, you know, on in mails or emails that we send out to people. I don't really get to get on the phone and talk to people. Uh, I try to keep the engagement to in mails and emails only, you know, just introduce myself, introduce the company. Uh, if they come back with any questions, you know, answer those questions. Even if sometimes candidates tell me that they are not interested, I try to keep them, you know, for a future prospect, you know, or somebody's given me a re reason that, you know, I've got, I've just got a baby and, you know, I can't leave my house and all of that. So I try to reach them back after a year, maybe. I just add some notes or set some reminders. So I don't have to get on the call and really do the convincing part of it, which I think uh, is the major, major differentiator. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the other reason is that the time zones and the language and the culture. So the recruiters regionally, regionally prefer to talk to the candidates directly. I'm more of, you know, find them and uh, introduce thought works to them uh, person. Okay. And tell me a bit about your, your tool stack. I, I, I know you've been looking a lot of kind of like what tools work, how they work together, but also what tools work in India that won't work anywhere else or yeah, what, what tools work everywhere else, but maybe not in India. So yeah, talk a little bit about what your tool stack looked like and you know, what tools work and, and what tools don't work for you. Uh, so, so if I have to start off with uh, the tools that work everywhere else, you know, the common tools that uh, let's say, for example, somebody in North America wants to source in India, 
I'll ask the I'll answer the second part of the question mm-hmm. first. So I think LinkedIn is one place uh, where everybody is present. Um, anybody can go on the platform and find the find the talent in India. Uh, you will find a lot of email addresses uh, through through the through the Chrome extensions that you know people globally use like Nymeria, Lucia, Hatchel, uh, or you know any any other one. So most of the tools that work outside work in India as well. Uh, the ones that do not work, so the ones that are specific to India but do not uh, work outside, are the ones that actually have a database. Mm-hmm. So if I have to say, you know, back when we were we got to know about Belong.co, um, it was like amazing hiring, you know, but it had a lot of data that is specific to India. Mm-hmm. And then uh, comes the job boards. So the job boards that are specific to India are very specific to India. Uh, but India doesn't have any rules uh, yet that you know restrict some tools to work in uh, work in India that actually work outside of India. So um, if if I am a sourcer who has never worked in the India market and if I come to India market and if I start to work here, I think um, I can just you know I can advise someone to actually look at LinkedIn, GitHub, Stack Overflow. Uh, these are the three major places where a lot of Indian people you know and and I'm referring to the technical talent, the IT yeah. pool out here. So. A lot of people are present on these three platforms, and and people are very responsive to emails. Uh, I would say the best tool that you know anybody can use in India market is a phone. Uh, you you drop somebody an email, you drop somebody an email, an email, and then you just pick up the phone, call that person, you know, as as a follow up. And I think that works great here. So yeah, that that would be like the best best way to reach out to people in India or to find people. And I know you've been involved with uh, with some of the speaking on the the Indian recruitment slash sourcing conferences as well. Um, but also, yeah, you and and the team has worked a lot on kind of building local communities, both in Pune and in Bangalore. Talk to me a bit about what the the sourcing or maybe in general like the the recruitment community looks like in India. Okay, um, so sourcing uh, as a function is you know just just booming in India. I think for some years, uh, uh, I think uh, for the last four five years maybe it it could be longer, but uh, that uh, that's the period that I have known uh, sourcing really evolved. Uh, so the the community in India is still learning you know what sourcing is. Uh, you would still hear people coming to conferences you know come up with some really basic questions uh, that uh, people who have been in sourcing would find like really simple to answer. Uh, people still have questions like, "Oh, would that tool give me the phone number? Would that tool still give me the email address?" So people are still learning here in India. Uh, we do have some some really good speakers or some really good platforms here in India. Uh, one of them is Tascon, uh, run by run by Yusuf, so Mr. Yusuf. So uh, he he has these on annual conferences where you know people come and they speak and they share knowledge. Um, to just to address the topics a bit, you know, uh, in India, most of the conferences that are related to sourcing. uh we speak about the messaging strategy how do how do people ma- personalize them and you know what are the chrome extensions uh, out there and you know how would you sell a job so the community is very much there um compared to you know what you would see globally where people are actually getting into coding and writing scripts and you know i know people out there who are planning to make their own tools and i really suspect you are one of those so uh that's that's how the community has been in india people are really eager to learn here uh we did we we once did a chapter in our thoughts office in pune and we had around 50 60 people attend it so we did a live workshop where we just gave everybody these story cards so we did like an agile workshop we gave people a story card and uh, so for example aniket so i got a card that says linkedin so my task would be to you know uh, share everything that i know uh, the the ways that people can use to find profiles on linkedin and that we had 60 people so we divided them in five six groups so people are really eager to learn out here and you know companies are learning that you know building in house sourcing teams how how it's beneficial uh, everybody in my team at least you know three four people continuously keep getting emails from uh, the local companies that you know we want to set up a sourcing team in our company as well so yeah that that's how the india market is evolving and people are really understanding what sourcing as a function can do and not just in providing profiles you know uh, those market insights uh, like you know akbar always says this that uh, recruitment is business facing and sourcing is uh, market facing so we actually have those insights from the market that we can go and share and i think uh, the companies or the leaderships have started to realize that so they are paying more attention towards the sourcing function and as a community as well no oh, absolutely uh, yeah I, i i've seen that kind of change in the last couple of years as well and and seen more and more of the indian sourcing community getting involved in the global hackathons and yeah. yeah seeing more and more about speakers coming to europe and the us and um and not just kind of going one way where it's like you know american sourcers going to india and saying this is how you do things but 
you, you get it the other way. It's like, no, that, that doesn't work here. Um, and getting those into that. Where it's, it's less and less like outsourcing the sourcing to India and more of a companies in India seeing that it's like, oh, we should actually look at that for our local markets and building that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, because Capgemini had such a successful sourcing model, I think a lot of companies were following it. Uh, I myself, before coming to ThoughtWorks, I worked in MasterCard. And I saw MasterCard in the early stages of setting up a sourcing team. And, you know, they were really out there, you know, trying to experiment, trying to hire people and, you know, adapt processes. So, yeah, I completely agree. You know, everybody is shifting their focus there. So, I'm a kid. Who are some of your influences, some of the people you learned from in your career? Um, to name out, you know, from the start of my journey, people that I learned from, uh, I, I spoke about the agency job that I had. Uh, I met this guy, Piyush, there, who actually taught me what uh, bulk recruitment would be. You know, the insurance market is what he was working for. So I think uh, he's the one who actually taught me what bulk recruitment was. And then moving into Capgemini, I think uh, Naga was one person who actually taught me bullions. Uh, I was the person who would only go and, you know, there are, there are these columns in uh, in any job board where they say all of the keywords, any of the keywords and none of the keywords. So I was someone who always used that. And Naga in my interview asked me questions about Boolean and he just, I, I would, you know, just answer things that, oh, I would add it in all of the keywords, none of the keywords. And he made the question so complex, so complex that, you know, I just, I just sat there and I said, I don't know. And then I went back from the interview and I did so much research and I was so happy that I learned Boolean from Naga that I went back to my agency and I called everybody, hey, do you know there's something called Boolean? And <laughs> if you have five different categories that you need one from each, Boolean is the right way to do it. And we've been doing it wrong all this, all this time. So Naga taught me Boolean and, and, and luckily, I think I, I would say fortunately, he did not reject me uh, in that <laughs> interview. I got selected and that's how I met Akbar Ali. Uh, you, you already know Akbar Ali. Uh, and Akbar is the one who actually taught me X-ray. So after Bullions, I think X-ray is the best thing that I learned. Uh, so no matter, you know, you take away all the job boards, all the portals and everything from me, all the paid access, and I can still find profiles. So, so that, that was X-ray and everything. Uh, the passive candidates, you know, how you let go of LinkedIn and all the job boards and you still find candidates. There was this person called Charles Doss. I think best manager that I know by far. You know. He's, he's like made people cry in his team. People would join the passive sourcing club and they would cry and they would leave the group. So he's the one who taught me. And just to name a few others, I think uh, jo Johnny Campbell has got his channel. Uh, till date, I, I learned Boolean, I think, two and a half years ago, two, three years ago. And even today, if somebody comes and asks me, I want to learn Boolean, I send them to Johnny Campbell's channel. There's Aaron Lentz, of course, I work with him. I think I'm the blessed one. I speak to Aaron Lentz every single week, you know, even if we don't talk about work, we joke, but I speak to Aaron Lentz and uh, Tascon, the one event that I just named, you know, uh, a lot of good speakers in Tascon and there, Dean DeCosta. Uh, I think he's, he's the Chrome extensions or tools God for us, for me and Akbar at least. Anytime somebody puts a tools related question to us, we point him to Dean DeCosta's site. <laughs> And uh, I think I mostly Google stuff. Uh, that's, that's like the conclusion of it. Anything else I need, I just Google stuff. Being one of the, the kind of first people in the, the, you know, the sourcing center of excellence and specifically with a co-located location in, in, in Pune, talk to me about some of the things that, that you as a team have learned of, of building a team to like, you're quite big now from what we were back then. Yeah, what are some of the, what's been some of the challenges? What's some of the things that you've learned? And, you know, is there things that you would have done differently if, if you had to build it from scratch again? If, if I look at what we know right now, uh, and if I look back uh, in hindsight, I think there are so many things that we could have done differently. Uh, but like at ThoughtWorks, you know, we believe in uh, that every individual does or works in the best of knowledge that we have done. I think we, we took the right steps. Uh, the mindset that you, um, Natalie, uh, everybody else, Aaron, Asha, Heather, you know, all of you, the mindset that you had uh, uh, for building the sourcing team in ThoughtWorks, I think that's still carried and uh, we, we are still actually living on those principles, you know, of agile. Uh, the challenges that we saw throughout was, you know, uh, allocating bandwidth. We, we, in the beginning, we did not know better. We, we had never worked globally for so many regions. So I think one thing that we did was over committing. Uh, we were bringing in so much work that we could not actually deliver. And I think that was like one of our challenges, trying to meet the demand, trying to meet the demand. And slowly we evolved uh, in a way where we actually started committing sprints in a way that we could actually deliver. And this was one of the factors, in fact, that led to the team's expansion. Uh, we had so much team, uh, so, so much work with us. And we, 
we were actually exhausting ourselves and uh, <laughs> so i think uh, that actually that actually got noticed and you know somebody up there thought that hey they are doing a lot uh, you know maybe if they get additional resources uh, they would be able to perform better so uh, that challenge that we had of you know having too much work uh, we planned a sprints around it we we committed we uh, instead of going for two week sprints we we cut it down to one week sprint uh, and uh, of course you know but for those of you uh, who watching this who might not know what a sprint is uh, we would actually source a decided number of profiles and we would meet a certain number of demands that would work on so the sprints became one week and uh, we we did, we did a lot of things with the data you know Uh, reverse engineering the data or reverse calculating you know we we gave it a very scientific approach now right from offer we calculated it back you know from offer reverse calculated so offer to office interview to technical interview to phone screen to outreach to number of profiles sourced to you know how many hours do we need to source per day yep. so we have gone down to that level because that's the only way i think uh, putting in the numbers in those calculators and having those uh, those calculations in place is what gave us that idea as to how many profiles do i need to source every day today to get those offers in this quarter so i think we broke everything down by step and uh, i think the team team really has clarity as to what they are supposed to be doing every day when they walk in you know everybody has their calendars managed so data has played a major role from where we started to where we are now uh, we kind of built on what we got you know from from the team that was there before us excellent And uh, Anikit, if people want to uh, stay in contact with you and and see where where your journey takes you, how can they best do that? Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. I think these are the three platforms where I personally follow a lot of people. I connect with people, and uh, pretty much always online on these three platforms. So <laughs> if if I get a message, you know, uh, if I don't respond in like a couple of hours, I'm either arrested or I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm I'm always there on these three platforms. So. LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people、um, and grow the community.